Gnomes aren't so much a cryptid as a mythical creature that was either created or simply brought into the public eye by the Swiss alchemist Paracelsus in the 16th century. As a small aside, I was surprised to see that gnomes aren't even older than that as I'd always assumed they went way back in your early European folklore, but alas, they are a few centuries more recent than I thought they were. Gnomes are one of four elemental spirits related to alchemy. They, of course, represent Earth, with the other three spirits being the Undyne, Water, the Sylph, Air, and the Salamander, Fire. Paracelsus originally described gnomes as being two spans high, which is just shy of two feet from my understanding. They are very reluctant to interact with humans and are able to move through solid earth as easily as humans move through air. According to FolkloreThursday.com, Paracelsus viewed gnomes and other elementals as being partway between an animal and a spirit, and that while they were invisible to humans, they had the same requirements as other creatures in order to live, that being things such as food, shelter, etc. One of the key differences is that elementals did not have souls, though they could potentially obtain one by marrying a human. It is theorized that Paracelsus' inspiration for gnomes came from another fairy-like mythological creature from Greek culture called the pygmy. In the 1800s, gnomes began to appear in fairy tales where authors began to shape them into something more closely resembling the imagery of gnomes we're familiar with today. While gnomes had originally started out as something closer to fairies, throughout the 18th and 19th century they began to be seen as more of the opposite. Where fairies were considered to be associated with beauty and light, gnomes became linked to ugliness and the darkness of underground spaces. Today, gnomes have become deeply entrenched in the fantasy genre, often seen as a standard fantasy race in literature, video games, and other media. And as we all know, they're very popular lawn ornaments as well, though if you read or watched that one book or episode of Goosebumps, you're probably a little wary of them. As one might expect from something that's more myth than cryptid, I couldn't find any accounts of gnome sightings that were true enough to gnome folklore to be worth mentioning from a basic Google search. However, one of the articles I read did mention a 2014 fairy census conducted by the Fairy Investigation Society, which collected numerous reports of sightings of many kinds of fairies and fairy-adjacent creatures. Some of the sightings were brief encounters with gnomes. If you're interested, I'll include the link where you can download the PDF PDF of the results of this fairy census to read for yourself. These accounts are from all over the world, and most of them closely follow the general description of gnomes. Small men dressed in clothing similar to garden gnomes who typically appear out of nowhere and disappear with very little interaction with the witnesses. One story did stand out as being creepier than the others, which I will leave a link to again if you want to read it. To summarize, someone in Australia reported that they were woken up by the sound of several voices in their room. When they looked, they saw several small people attempting to pull them off their bed and into a nearby wardrobe. The group of little people consisted of both men and women around two feet high, wearing cold weather clothing and having the rough skin of people who spent a lot of time working outdoors. After several instances where they saw the people, thought nothing of them, fell asleep, and woke up to see them again, the person finally became fully awake and managed to fend them off just before they had managed to pull them into the wardrobe. Seemingly disappointed, the creatures went into the wardrobe and disappeared, leaving the witness in a state of hysterical fear. They went on to say that they don't think the gnome-like creatures they experienced were friendly and that they, quote, do not believe they regard mankind kindly. Years later, their daughter told them that they had also seen the gnome-like creatures coming from the wardrobe as well and that they were scared of them. So make of that what you will. For this piece, I chose to put my own little spin on the traditional gnome. Since gnomes are mostly just depicted as small old men, and I find drawing regular people incredibly boring, I opted to give these guys some slightly more specialized anatomy. I added a little bit of animal influence to their features, mostly in the arms, hands, and feet. I imagine they live in a similar society to, to humans, but make their homes underground in what's basically a jumbo-sized rabbit warren. Thus, I gave them big arms, hands, and claws to do some of the digging and fine-tuning of their environment, though I'm sure they use other tools to carve out their homes as well. I made my gnome slightly fuzzier than human, so in spite of the little guy in blue having facial hair, he is in fact a child. Their hats and clothing were of course inspired by the traditional depiction of gnomes. Speaking of clothing, I have very little experience with clothing folds, so apologies for that. I did try and I'm okay with how they turned out. I like this piece as a whole uh, far more than I thought I would when I first set out to do this. 
Though looking back, I realized I forgot to add dirt smudges to these guys to make them more part of their environment. Better luck next time, I guess. Anyways, I'm happy with the simple little illustration. I think it turned out really cute. After reading that one account of the gnome encounter though, I hope I never see them in real life, cute or not.